one of the issues here right at the beginning is that Prince Andrew has diplomatic immunity by virtue of his status with the royal family, and he is a witness in this case, and he didn't need to go to America for that. He would have been a bit part player. The problem he's got now is that he has got a situation where he's been prepared to talk to a journalist in detail over 45 minutes, and although he still has his diplomatic immunity, it becomes a practical impossibility, as Chuka Amuna said, that he doesn't now go to America and cooperate fully with David Boyce and the other lawyers acting for the victims of Jeffrey Epstein to give evidence, and also with this ongoing FBI inquiry. And the problem with that is that that may lead to places that really don't want to go. Dickie, uh, it's hard to think of a more catastrophic own goal in terms of PR by a member of the royal family. I mean, even when Diana and Charles did their TV interviews, they were about, you know, far less contentious stuff, frankly. They made big headlines, but they weren't about serious criminal activity and investigation involving a serial paedophile. This is a whole different ball game, isn't it? It's a totally different ball game. Yes, it, it is a serious issue. He was friends with a convicted paedophile. Why would you take four days at his house with young women coming and going, watched by investigative journalists, well, he, if you were saying goodbye to somebody? He claimed he didn't know what was going on. He claimed that the... He's seen literally waving goodbye himself yes. through the crack of the door to a young woman. But he also claimed that his Epstein's house was a bit like a railway station. Well, if it's a bit like a railway station, and you saw, see all these underage ladies walking through, aren't you going to ask questions? Aren't you going to wonder why they're all there? And Mark, the thing that struck me, uh, I wrote a column about this for the Daily Mail yesterday, is that it was the little lies throughout that interview, I felt, obvious lies, which were immediately refuted by social media. We live in a social media age. You can't say stuff and not have the internet come back and remind you of he it. He said he wasn't a party guy. He said he wasn't, guy. A, wasn't a hugger. Mm -hmm. Loads of pictures come out of him hugging Doesn't people. Doesn't do PDA. Never goes out in London without a jacket and tie. Mm -hmm. Immediately pictures of him in an open neck uh, shirt, as mm -hmm. he was in the infamous apparent picture with one of his, his, his woman he supposed to have slept with. Uh, he said he never sweats. Most medical experts have said this is all nonsense. All the little stuff that he said as a fact that could be tested... Mm -hmm has now been refuted within two days. It does beg the question, if he's lying about the little stuff, how can we trust him on the bigger stuff? Well, the only reason you do this is if you've got complete and utter answers to every question. And we knew going in he didn't. You know, if he had come up with the special protection unit, the uh, uh, logs of where he was, so he can prove mm. demonstrably with police evidence that he was at uh, a, a, a Pizza Express as opposed to Tramp, then that would have been perhaps something. But the problem is you've now got literally hundreds, if not thousands, of data points which are going to be crawled over by journalists, police and the lawyers in America. Well, let's talk to uh, Di Davis, former head of Royal Protection. Um, there are two big issues here. His friendship with Jeffrey Epstein and how he broke it off and the allegations by Virginia Roberts about uh, three occasions where she alleges that she was trafficked to Prince Andrew. And he addressed one of those occasions, March the 10th, 2001, in the interview with Emily Maitlis. Lots of people, of course, asking, you know, he would have had royal protection officers with him on that date when he says that he was at Pizza Express Woking in the afternoon and did not spend the night uh, with Virginia or at Tramp nightclub. What access do people have to those records, Royal Protection Officer records? Well, it's a question I've been asking myself because it's some time since I ever had dealings with them or their records. I don't think they kept my new tie every time they went, you know, to get a packet of fags or whatever. However, in respect of the pizza, yes, they would have gone with him. In respect of the tramps, I mean, let's face it, uh, the pizza was at 5 p.m. and the tramps don't open till 10.30. They certainly would have gone there, they would have advanced it, they would have remained with him and there would have been what we call backups as well. So uh, there are a lot of questions to ask, answer. Uh, I don't believe, frankly, a word he said. And I said yesterday to the media, I would have loved to sit down now with him, as I'm sure Piers would, and interrogate him as a police officer 
as against a journalist. Well, I think I think the thing for me was, it, like I said, it was the fact he was so brazenly, clearly lying about all the little stuff meant to me he's clearly covering up something. We just don't know how big the cover-up is. It seems to me, Di, that it defies common sense that someone could be as friendly as he was with Jeffrey Epstein for over 10 years and have no idea that this guy who, at all his homes, had this kind of railway system of young, many underage girls being ferried in and out, and that Andrew simply had no idea that when he spent four days with this guy after he was convicted of being a paedophile, and news, uh, uh, investigators from newspapers saw women coming and going throughout the four days, that Andrew simply had no idea. None of this makes any sense. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me as a professional investigator, now with over half a century, both at home and worldwide on some investigations. It simply doesn't make sense, and that's why I've decided I must speak out. But equally so, I understand, and you may correct me, that Scotland Yard have been asked to uh, investigate these allegations. And if you recall, four or five years ago, every victim allegedly was to be believed. And yet now we're told that whoever at Scotland Yard or higher up this food chain somehow, in their wisdom, decided there was an iota of evidence. Now, I have seen some of the testimonies, and I would very respectfully say, as a very, ex well, modestly an experienced police officer, somebody som somewhere should be explaining why these allegations, which allegedly have been put to them, they've decided they don't even merit. Now, the rest of the world are screaming for somebody to establish the truth of this. And that's all I'm saying. I'd remind everybody he is innocent until proved guilty. Yeah. But unless you start investigating a crime, as we well know, you will never find any evidence. And I'm... Well, what can I say? I'm frustrated at best and, and, and astonished at worst yeah. over this whole issue. It's not being handled well by anyone. No, well, Dickie Arbiter, I mean, you've worked with the Queen at Buckingham Palace. You know, I really feel for the Queen. She's had a pretty bad year anyway. She's had a rough time. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of shenanigans involving members of the royal family. A picture of her on her horse all alone yesterday, probably contemplating what the hell is happening. Mm. She will know the gravity of this. She will. Her instincts have always been fantastic. She will know this is really serious. This is not just Harry and Meghan behaving hypocritically about private jets, which is a low-level irritation. This is big stuff. What will she be looking to do, do you think, to try and deal with this? Well, we've got to look at the Queen as two people. She's Queen Head of State. She's also a mother. Um, and she'll be looking at her son uh, and asking, did this really happen uh, in a private conversation? And I don't think she's getting the answers. Mark Stevens, where does this investigation, as it stands, go? Well, I think what we're forgetting here and what is often overlooked in the interview with Andrew are the women, the victims. And in this particular case, given that there have been reports to the police on both sides of the Atlantic, the victims need to be remembered. They need to know the truth. They need to have a proper, full investigation, as Di Davis said. And if that doesn't happen, what should happen? I mean, we're already seeing sponsors of Prince Andrew's major charities bailing out on him. What happens to his role in public life? I think it becomes untenable. Uh, I don't see how he can continue if, you know, he's got a fabulous uh, charity with Pitch where he brings entrepreneurs together with business and if they're walking away from him and others, then I think that there is no future for him. I think the Queen and Charles and the main members of the royal family are untouched by this, but uh, I think Prince Andrew Dickie, is scathed. Dickie, final word to you. I mean, how do you cancel a member of the royal family if that's what needs to be done? Well, in, in private life, you send them on gardening leave. I think with uh, Prince Andrew, it's a sabbatical. And uh, until this is resolved, he really does need to step back. OK, I'm going to leave it there. Dickie thank you all Mark very much. Bye, Davis, thank you all. Uh, Mark and Dickie, thank you all very much indeed. That scandal is not going away. If anything, I'd say it's gathering momentum. Mm.